Hello and a very warm welcome back to the channel of automotive nonsense. This is the biggest car I've ever seen that didn't come from the land of molten plastic cheese and horned men invading government buildings. It's the Kia EV9, it's all electric, it's huge, I can walk around inside it, and it's the only car I've ever been in where I can sit behind myself, behind myself like some kind of human Tim Road EP. But anyway, we're in the studio. We're gonna take for a full walk around, show you all the cool new tech in it, the size of it, the scale of it, and the practicality for family life. So let's get cracking. Before I melt under these studio lights, which are giving me a nice little moob shadow, treat you, don't I? I don't think we can really start anywhere but talking about the size. It's five meters long, which is about the same as the Audi Q7, but because this is electric only, it's been designed with a flat floor on the inside, and we'll get onto that in a minute. Loads more space inside than in the Audi. Just look at it, it's got these flush door handles that pop out, you're gonna be able to get it. In a whole range of colors, there's usually your whites, your reds, your grays, your greens, and you can get a gloss version of this blue as well, if matte paint isn't your thing. Now, what you can't see is the tires, they're actually noise defeating, noise cancelling tyres. They're gonna be filled with foam to really deaden sound in the cabin, a bit like the BMW iX does. And those really made a difference in that car. So hopefully this will ride well and actually be quiet and comfortable as well. But let's check out the cabin and see what it does with all of that lovely space. Here in good old Blighty, you're gonna be able to get the EV9 as either a six seater or a seven seater. This is a six seater version. Uh, these seats we're not actually gonna be having in the UK. We're gonna have fancier ones in the six seater, which can swivel to face backwards when you're at a stop or swivel to face sideways so you can get your child seat in and out more easily. And I think that's gonna help you save money on those stupid heavy rotating child seats as well. But look at this. I am in the third row of a six seater car. And apart from the fact I'm sitting on my microphone, my knees don't even touch the seats in front of me. I've also got an armrest, I've got two cup holders, I've got a USB-C socket. I am not a third rate citizen in the third row of an SUV and that makes me so happy. And because the floor is flat, I can get up and walk in and out. It is absolutely cavernous in here. I'm not bunched up, I'm just not compromised. I can't get over it. But anyway, let me show you middle seat comfort to prove that I can sit behind myself, behind myself, behind myself like a, yeah, done that joke, haven't I? Right, I'm gonna quickly show you the middle seats as well. These are actually ventilated in this version, and I think in top spec ones in the UK, that's gonna carry over as well. Ventilated rear seats. You don't normally get that in an S-Class until you're paying absolutely tons of money. But look, yeah, I've got loads of room, and if I want to, I can have stupendous amounts of room. I can fit my feet under that seat really nicely. I've got loads of headroom, even with the sunroof. I've got a little map pocket there. I can access these cup holders here, and I've got a USB-C, so we've got one each. Biggish door bins, not the biggest, but they'll hold a bottle of Coke nice and easy. Now I should point out, Kia's making a big song and dance about how much recycled material is in the EV9. 70 plastic bottles worth, they're using things like paint made from rapeseed oil rather than crude oil around some of the door switches. And yeah, there's some really cool uses of mesh and stuff. There's not a single ounce of dead cow in this car, which is massive, and I really like stuff like that. But anyway, that's boring to talk about. Let's show you up front where there are now three screens. More screens, but it's actually a good thing. There are buttons too. Oh, I'm getting so excited. Right, we're getting a bit of a peep behind the scenes at Studio Life here. There'll be stuff going on out there, but look at me and how sweaty I'm getting under these studio lights. But anyway, the interior feels nicer than any Kia I've been in before. And to be honest, it's a pretty upmarket brand already. But yeah, it's helped by the twin screen layout. Now with this, this is a permanently on third screen purely for your aircon and climate controls. So Kia has realized we're bored of going through touchscreens to turn the temperature up and down. They've given us a little dedicated screen for it that's always on. That's great. We've also got some physical buttons for temperature down here and driving modes and fans off and on, things like that. And these buttons are virtual, but they've got some haptic feedback, which is really nice. So it's a new screen layout on here. It's also got for the first time the Kia Connect store where you'll be able to buy software upgrades for the car, things like different daytime running light patterns and more torque if you buy the dual motor one to drop the 0 to 60 time by almost a second. And a few other bits and pieces that are normally on the options list that you can unlock via software. Don't know the prices on that stuff yet? Just don't ask me. I don't even know the price of the car yet, but we'll get onto that. But yeah, you've got a four spoke steering wheel, apparently stolen from the Kia Telluride in the States. I don't know, I've not driven one. And you put it into gear using the very familiar Hyundai Kia drive knob down there. Now, loads of storage in this car. I've got big cup holders here and there's a wireless charger here. 
One thing I'll show you on a cutaway is how much room your middle row passengers have. They've got a big storage cubby under the center console. Uh, flat floor, more storage down here, USB-C's down here. Oh my God, and there's a glove box, which is absolutely vast. So you're not gonna be shy of storage in here. Some other stuff it's got, it's got level three driving tech. It's ready for that, so it can avoid collisions on motorways, but it still will require a human to be paying attention. It's only gonna be available in Germany to start with, where they should have called it hands off, hands off. Driving. I don't think they have done that because they're better at marketing than me. Uh, and we've already spoken about digital door mirrors. They're not going to be in the British versions, at least at the start. Oh, and you can obviously put a key on your smartphone and use that and share that with your friends. Standard stuff. What I should point out is the headrests are lovely and breathable. They're mesh. They're made of recycled material. I'll show you them as well in the cutaway because they're really, really comfy. But anyway, let's check out the boot because there's a lot going on back there. Now there's a good chance if you're watching this video, you're interested in the EV9 as your next family whip. And the good news is practicality is off the charts. Good on this car. It's got 300 liters of boot space and that's with all the seats up. That's more than a Ford Fiesta, basically. Now you can fold these down by holding these little straps, giving them a little, a little tug. And you've got more than 800 liters of space. I don't know the exact figures yet, but frankly, I've not seen bigger holes on OnlyFans. That is ridiculous. I've got a three pin plug socket here. I've got, yeah, loads of stuff. A 12 volt over here. There's a little bit of space under there for your parcel shelf. It is a ginormous boot and you can access it obviously from the cabin as well. I'm slightly gobsmacked as a parent that has lots of stuff like prams and nappies and unwanted toys, tantrums. You can fit a whole lot in here, more than most other cars I've ever seen. Now this is the part of the video where I get to say the word GIMP repeatedly because this is on Kia Hyundai Genesis's eGIMP platform. It's got 800 volt electric architecture so you can charge it really quickly. Kia is saying that you can get about 150 miles of charge in 15 minutes at a very fast public charger and that probably cost you about as much as the car but hey who's cynical? Me! The other big thing is that you can do vehicle to load on it so you take this thing which looks nothing like anything anything else he's struggling to get the cap off it of course he is oh god i can't get the rubber tip off the end of anyway that's done um, that goes in there and then i can plug my leisure vehicle in here i have rehearsed this i promise and then that bicycle will charge because apparently bicycle needs charging now it's 2023 but yeah you can basically plug stuff in so if you go camping you probably run a small microwave or something off the car it's just cool it's handy and it's uh there's a thing you can do Let's look at the face. I remember a time when Kias were cute and cuddly and your nan probably had one for running to Asda in. They've come a long way, haven't they? Look at this. This is the new design language of Kia. It's got a digital tiger face, this bit here, and it's got these beautiful LED daytime running lights and headlights as well. Now, big feature of this car is it's covered in sensors. It's got two LiDAR sensors at the front to help it get that level three autonomous driving majonkers. And it's festooned in cameras, the sensors down here, the sensors up there. It's got a lot going on, but I just think it looks so imposing. If I saw this coming up behind me in lane three of the M25, I would think, ooh, there's a drug baron with a seven year warranty. They're doing very well. I should probably move out of their way. But yeah, I really like the way it looks. So there you have it. That's my walk around of the Kia EV9. I hope it has been helpful. I'm kind of blown away by this car and I'm very excited to go and see if it drives as well as it does all the practicality stuff. It's coming out towards the end of 2023 here in the UK. Now there's no official word on price yet, but my spidey sense is telling me that entry level rear wheel drive versions are gonna be about 60,000 pounds and top spec dual motors will probably start with an eight which feels insane for a Kia, but given how far the brand has come in terms of premium field technology, kicking the Germans in the teeth and saying, have that, whatever that means in Korean, I think it's actually gonna be semi-decent value for money. If you want an EV that has got decent range, decent power, a real premium feel, some really clever touches, and of course, perhaps one of the most practical interiors I've ever seen on a car, I think this is gonna be hard to beat. That's my prediction. Anyway, thank you for watching. If this has been helpful, please give me the old thumbs up, likey, likey. Do subscribe to the channel because I've got plenty more videos coming soon. And go down to the comments and leave me the Korean word for self-folding seats. Bye.